About two years ago, I started to rediscover my love for analog photography. And I've, I shot so much digital that I kind of wanted a bit of that simplicity back. And I began to build very simple pinhole cameras and um, that led to me building a much sturdier version. And around that time, I happened to talk to Sebastian. Over a couple of beers, my friend who works for the Max Planck Institute told me about a side project they've been working on for, I don't know, 15 years. And they called that Lichtverstärkung, which translates to light amplification. They were experimenting with electromagnetic fields to do some really complicated stuff with light particles. In the early 90s, we developed a technology with the Jacques Cousteau Foundation to amplify the minute traces of light present at a depth of 8,000 meters. Electromagnetic principles allow this instrument to amplify directional light in a way that was previously unthinkable. You know, most of what Sebastian told me didn't really make a lot of sense to me, but on the train ride home, I started to think about what application that could have for photography. In standard photography, we only use 2 to 4% of the energy. And that's when I began to wonder if there was a way for us to harness some of the energy in the ambient light. I knew right away that an electromagnetic solution wouldn't really be practical. For this project to take hold, we needed to use a much simpler solution. And that's when the invisible camera was born. The principle of this camera is very much like a simple pinhole camera, except that this one is entirely transparent. I began constructing this prototype using a special polarized glass that aligns the, the ambient light and amplifies the, the energy that forms the image. Our initial tests were so successful that our light meter readings were off the scale. At this point, the idea would work in theory, but there was still one major obvious obstacle. We needed to find a way to capture the image. And that's where directional desensitization entered the picture. I contacted a colleague at Spürsen and explained the situation. Once he stopped laughing and realized that I was serious, he told me he'd give it some thought. That was the beginning of an 18-month process that ultimately led to directional desensitization. We started with one of our standard films and combined it with an innovation in chemistry. Making use of our new desensitization method, we can now eliminate the non-directional ambient light so that the film only registers light from a very specific angle. After many unsuccessful attempts, they developed a revolutionary new film that is completely unaffected by ambient light. The ambient light by nature is tremendously scattered. This new film only registers light when focused from a very specific angle. This allows us to use all the energy in the ambient light without altering the content of the image. It also means that we can handle this film in broad daylight with no effect whatsoever. By replacing the lens with a precision pinhole and by using amplified light, we're able to achieve fractional ISOs. In the past, a low ISO was considered ISO 100, ISO 50, ISO 25. But with the directional desensitization technology, we're actually looking at somewhere in the range of ISO 1500. This in turn produces a resolution boost that gives us the digital equivalent of about 3,000 5D Mark IIs. That's enough to cover half a football field. What we've done here is we have effectively ended the megapixel race. We've skipped gigapixels altogether, and we've now entered the realm of the terapixel. When I imagined the camera, I knew it needed to be practical if anyone besides myself was going to use it. 
The last thing I wanted to devise was a gimmick like 3D or HDR. And I knew that if anyone was gonna use the camera in the field, it had to be really sturdy. The material we use here is not only polarizing, it's also very strong. In fact, the engineers who built this camera told me that it's bulletproof, even though I never hoped to find that out. We also needed the film to be easy to access and handle, and since it's directionally desensitized, we don't have to worry about change bags or dark rooms. We still need to avoid fingerprints, but that's actually pretty easy to do. So far, in order to keep it simple, we have been focusing on the pinhole model and on the extremely low ISOs. We're actually working on a controlled shutter version now that will allow us for extremely fast shutter speeds of a hundred thousandth of a second and faster. We feel that this will not only appeal to scientific endeavors, but its simplicity will allow it to be accessible to a broad range of photographers.